No, that's that's old man. That's when I Gumball was a kid. Gumball is old that's man. That's when I was a kid. Gumball's not even on air anymore. What? Yeah. Okay. Neither is Adventure Bluey. Time. We love Bluey. All right, we're moving on to yes. the next one, though. <laughs> we got of Bluey. Comet and Ash Goku Black. I don't know how I feel about that tag. I'm going to keep it a buck. I don't know what to feel about that one. Yeah, and uh, Ash Goku actually was seated here to, uh, I believe, 0 2 uh, this tournament. So here in Winner's Corners, right, taking it through a string of upsets now on the Pokemon Trainer, potentially in Winner's Finals, make an upset over one of the top seeds of this tournament. It is Comet, who we were talking about before, or taking a little bit of a different approach to some of these neutral openers than we might see other Foxes take. And so far, Goku Black's been ready for it. Yeah, I'm like, I I'm... I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of stuck on this tag here. I mean, Comet obviously the one that's kind of seated to win here, but I'm just like, Ash, Goku Black, so is it supposed to be like, like what is, Goku Black, same thing as like Shadow Goku, effectively, right? Because in Japan, they don't say Dark Goku, they say Goku Black, right? Same thing with like Dark Link, it would be just like Link Black or something like that, you know what I mean? So I'm like, are you supposed to be a dark? Ash Ketchum? No, it's, but, I, I think it's, I, I, maybe it's Ash Goku, like, just like Ash in color? Because I'm a Pokemon trainer, so I'm like, it has to be like Ash, like Ash Ketchum, right? Oh, but, true. But I, anyway, Comet kind of waxing him right now, but we'll see if Ash Goku Black can strike back. And, I mean, striking back by right after this neutral interaction, because Comet opened the last one with a jab one into a read off the mix up. Of, of absolutely clicking the Tomahawk dash attack, not something you see every day, into the double up there. You know, I know we're here at Full Bloom. This is a melee tournament, but that was a melee combo right there before Goku Black finally getting on the board. A lot of work left to do here, Flambo, though, to get another shot of this game, though. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've seen Cody Schwab hit that one at least a couple times in his career. But we'll see if uh, maybe Goku Black can answer back. We got a little down throw and a waterfall action. Potential for an edge guard here. It's going to go low, and we're not going to get the two frame on the Firefox, but a great ledge trap there. And swap to Ivysaur. Hold on, get a spike. Oh, it doesn't go for that down air on that box illusion that could have potentially been the stock. We'll see if. Ash Goku Black is able to find another opportunity to close and out the stock. Comet's height there actually kind of precluded that down air because you're at the height and distance that you can get a non two frameable angle on that illusion where there is no opportunity to get spiked because you just snap to ledge unless they go all the way out, which is where that reversal potential can then start to happen. So Goku Black playing it safe, which makes sense here, especially down. That being said, you're not, while you're not out yet, you are trying to avoid that. You are at Having Fox at kill percent though being huge because unless this character finds that weak nair or a raw read, they can struggle to kill. Oh, no, no spike there either. Couldn't get the timing, but the up air is going to be enough. So we do have a final stock game here. Ooh, tries to be careful there. The invincibility kind of helping Comet out a little bit. How does Ash Goku Black get out the corner? You know what Fox does here. Back air, back air, back air. And then maybe comes down with a nair to an up smash. That back air was almost enough on its own. I am really interested by the decision to stay Ivysaur here. It's almost definitely because of these vine whips, right? Those back ears, the disjoint, only to just create a little extra space against versus Charizard, who despite living longer, uh, kind of just combo food at Fox, and when you're already that high, I get it to some degree, but unfortunately just not working out as Ash Goku. Gonna drop the first game, but able to bring that all the way back to a last stock situation, right? After Comet came out of the doors boring. So, in a, here in a potential game two, as we go back to PS2 Flambo, oh, I'm just looking to see a little bit more fluidity, and I'm looking to see this Squirtle, frankly, just get even a little bit of mileage, right? Because it was all Ivysaur last game, and to open up with an, a neutral opener could, and a lead could be huge for Goku here. Yeah, you know, against Fox, I'm always looking for what does the offstage look like, right? If you're able to get your edge guards on Fox, it makes it a very different feeling matchup. And it's part of me that was wondering if maybe the reason for staying Ivy in that last match was maybe just like, well, it is last talk. If I can get Fox off stage and put him in a precarious situation, I might just be able to win from there. But right now, it's looking pretty rough. You see the swap there because a the back air on Squirtle at that percent might have actually risked being KO potential. Oh, speaking of KO potential, my friend Full Hop Nair comes down from the heavens and then sends you right back up to the blast zone. Oh, now Comet with the stock lead, but 70% to his name. But Goku has started off a little bit hot, hotter, has gotten a lot of mileage off this Squirtle, but just hasn't been able to find an advantage state. They've all been these straight hits. 
Yeah, it's looking really rough for Ash Goku Black here. I mean, Comet with these extensions really adding on those extra bits of pressure. How does Ash Goku Black get out the corner here? Just does it by jumping or reversal with the Nair to get edge guard. Nice. Manages to tag the illusion on the way to the ledge there and finally gets the first stock and isn't trailing by too much, right? Like here, well, we'll see if we can get out of disadvantage first because you can combo. We've seen a couple of these now from Comet in different situations where he's just whiffed an aerial or whiffed something and given Ash Goku a better chance. It's a big part of the reason Ash Goku, especially here in this game number two, is still in this one. Oh. Stuck on the charge art. I like the landing up air attempt. It's a really underutilized combo starter innovated by Beast over in Philly, but unfortunately for Goku and Comet gonna take it and now just whack on the damage out of the blender too. Oh man, yeah. Not able to really go blow for blow with Comet here. Every time Comet's getting a hit, it's leading to at least two to three, to sometimes even four hit conversions. Meanwhile, on the other side, Ash Goku Black just kind of getting smothered here. Can't find an opening to really lead to massive amounts of damage. I like that drop through that platform mix up. The Comet now right, really starting to mess oh. with their own pace of play. Catch Goku Black off guard because Comet's been playing the same high octane in game throughout and now is starting to, you know, not approach every time they dash in. They're starting to dash in. They're starting to hold this shield and play a little bit slower. But Goku has taken advantage. It's just not going to be enough to trade, and that is it, my friend. Yeah, sometimes it do just be that quick. But that is also generally how most matchups with Fox tend to go. If it, you're not going up against a character that's really good at spacing Fox out and kind of slowing things down just through the nature of the kit that they have, the sets can run that fast, especially when you have a player like Comet piloting the character. You get some really quick and KOs here. F finding that Nair was actually really fantastic under the platform, right? That's exactly why Goku Black was positioned there, was to prevent that Nair from coming out. But Comet found the exact spacing to make it happen. And now just like this ledge trapping right we saw from Comet was not standard throughout the set. At he started game one, especially like they really going out there for some of the edge guards. And so was able to use Fox's edge trapping. Normally, right, his bread and butter way of keeping pressure on you when you're in the corner and used it as a layer, right? That like he added on to his gameplay as the set progressed. And that type of non-traditionality is something that I think really does set Comet apart from some of the other Foxes because we do see other Foxes edge guard, but we don't normally see them start with it. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's a good shout. I also think that the shout that you made about kind of the way that Comp was able to find that opening by the platform yeah. is really important to point out because as time has progressed, and at this point, I mean, platform fighters have been around for like a decent amount of time, the safety of actually being under a platform is something that often ends up being kind of overlooked. And not right? just the safety of being under it, but where you are under it, right? For example, on PS2, the difference between on the inside edge and the outside of edge of platform is huge and both are good but like one might say hey i'm fully defensive and the other might say i'm defensive but i'm looking for a reversal into my own platform extension right there's a lot you can tell about your opponent's game plan not just by the fact that they're under there and they're trying to be safe but where they're standing where they are in relative position to the opponent because it's all about leaning your opponent's options right yes. it's not keeping them out but it's keeping them and limiting them down so that instead of having to cover this much space you can cover this much space yes yes really you just want to Make your job easier, right? Exactly. Effectively, that's what it is, right?